All right, so Unk, man, so you finish your, your third stint with the NBA, you wrap it up with the Grizzlies, uh, and you decided, like, man, you're just tired of the back and forth, the uncertainty uh, of really not knowing if, you know what I'm saying, each year if you're going to be able to make the team or get a deal. And so you decide to go to Europe, you decide to go to Russia, and, and, and for you, I guess, in your mind, you're like, man, this is, this is just where I want to finish my career. I want to play in Europe. So uh, – just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it was like, um, of course, if you had a choice, you know, you would have loved to, you know, play in the league. But, I mean, at that point in time, you know, in life, you know, you um, playing in Europe was cool. So I felt that was the best decision at that time. And just go ahead and play in Europe and, and uh, you know, enjoy my, you know, chances. I mean, at times playing in the NBA and stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, at that time, and then just to try to come back and go to go through the physicals and the, actually knowing what it would take to compete on that level. You know what I mean? So that was another thing, to be able to physically be able to go in and go with the grind, the day-to-day -day grind of competing with that level. Even though it is harder, you know what I mean? It's physically like the training in Europe, you know what I mean? You would think, but, I mean, you know, just the grind in the NBA, that's, that's tough for your body. So um, I wasn't too sure how my, you know what I mean, how my body would hold up to that, how my knee would hold up to all that. So you're in Russia. You say you enjoyed your time in Russia. You actually said, uh, you actually said we ran into each other in Russia. I don't. Re I don't remember. I don't. I'm not, remember. I was playing, I'm not sure what team. I'm not sure if it was if I was playing in Russia. I know what what guy was on there. I'm trying to think who was on your team. I'm not trying. To, man, I forget what team. On my was. team that year was Kelly McCarty. Yeah, Mach you had Kelly. Mache Lamp, but Kelly was Cardi. Well, he was there the, the years after that too, though. But Mache Lampe, Clay. Yeah, that was it. That's when it was. That was a year. I had Chris Alonso on my team. Big dude, Chris Alonso. With that, with um, the hair, he had that. He had. He used to do this. Yeah, style. that dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that year, or whatever. But um, <clears throat> you know, that was a cool year. You know, what I mean, just playing in that league and stuff like that. We got a chance to. Um, I think we played in like the VTB league too, or something like that. So we we're kind of going back and forth. You know, what I mean, playing that competition and stuff like that. But I mean, uh. Yeah, but, but like I said, by that time, my mom was on Europe and then staying over there, focused over there in Europe and things like that. So, but uh, it was cool. Uh, it was cool over there in Russia. Well, see, for you, and I'm glad you brought that up because for you, you said that by the, when you made your decision, you was based on, on the fact that, you know, like you didn't feel like your knee would hold up for the, for the NBA grind. And you was already seasoned in going to Europe. Right, so he was like, "Man, I want to see. I, I don't. I, I like to travel, and I would like to see. You know, like to see more of the world." Uh, and a lot of people ask. You know, I'm pretty sure they asked you, but they asked me about. You know, how how was it playing overseas? And for me, my mindset was totally opposite of yours. I had no. You know what I'm saying? I I didn't care. I didn't care about seeing the world. You know what I'm saying? I, I always tell people I, I haven't even seen all the historical monuments in my own country. So, what you know what I'm saying? Like, my mind wasn't on, oh, man, I get a chance to travel the world at the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm older now, so mm -hmm. I appreciate it different now. But at the time, younger, when I'm fresh over there, I could care less about seeing Spain and, and uh, you know, in those, in those like Greece and those type of places. And I wasn't, I was off all that. And I was like, look, man, I'm, I'm just here trying to get, trying to get it right, prove I can be a point guard and get back to the league. But it's just the different mindsets that people have. And I tell people this all the time. It just depends on the individual or how much you enjoy playing in Europe. It was, it was like, man, it was just embracing that culture. You know what I mean? It was different over there. You know what I mean? And, and for me, growing up in a small town, you know what I mean, getting a chance to see all these things. You, I've always been one of them history guys, like growing up watching National Geographic. You know what I mean? As a kid, instead of watching cartoons, I was watching like that. It's all a National Geographic. So I've always been interested in it than that type of stuff. You know what I mean? So, um, like I said, the basketball always just worked hard and felt like I prepared myself, like, for that. And I always felt like that was going to be what it was when I stepped down the court. I knew I was always going to give everything I had. So, I honestly never really worried about that part of it. You know what I mean? I was going to be focused. But, man, I would, I would just be more happy. You know what I mean? Like, we went over to Greece, you know what I mean, that year in Poland. You know what I mean? Getting this chance to uh, uh, see those things we saw, like, people – you know, people don't get a chance to see those things, man. You got to think, like, we out here just chilling, doing it for, you know what I mean? We pay, didn't pay a dime on that, that, that trip to Greece. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. see these things for free now. And even you now have to take your kids back over there. You know what I mean? It's going, all that's, you know what I mean? So, those were, um, 
you know, those are like memories, man. And especially not even working with kids now. I think it helped me. I think it helped more playing in Europe than it did to play with the NBA because you, you had to uh, learn how to get along with people with different cultures. You know what I'm saying? Uh, saying things differently than they are here. So does that mean the things you're able to come back and tell kids and how you're able to more help kids, I think it benefited in the long run. You know what I mean? From that aspect being in Europe. So you, you spoke of the fact that we played together in Poland. So you, this was in 2000, 2007, 2008. You, you decided yeah. you was going to go back to Europe for good. So fast forward a couple of years later, which is what, 2009, 2010? No. Yeah, 2009, yeah. 2010, was that the year? 2009, 2010, yeah, that year, that year. 2009, 2010, we, we joined, we, we hook up on the same team. Uh, I had been there already a year. You was joining the team the second year in. Had a dope squad. Uh, can you talk about that? You talk, I mean, you've, we've talked about it before, but just talk about that, man. Knowing, like, you, you knew who I was. Like, like you said, your, your draft workout, you knew who I was. Whatever little status I've had, you know, you know, whatever you kind of you thought that you was going into. You talk a little bit about, you know, our how our relationship kind of formed, and then just the relationship we had as a team and, and the success we had. Man, like that, I always say, man, that was probably one of the best years, like overall in basketball as a team that we had. But um, you know, as an individual, I wouldn't say it was probably one of my best years. But for a team, I'll take it because everybody. Like that was a big year because everybody had to play that role. And I don't think if nobody, <clears throat> if anybody would have tried to do anything outside of their role, you know what I mean? I don't think we would have had um, the success that we had on our team. And, um, but man, that was a, that was a really, really good team. And I mean, as far as me and you, like I say, we were, I was, you know, I was older than, you know what I mean? I don't been around and right now we, we trying to, um, we try to do something big, you know what I mean? When, when the team does well, I always look like like the team do well. Everybody going, you know, everybody gonna, uh, you know, benefit from that. And so it was never no competition. You know, it was, I never looked at it like competition. <clears throat> you know what I mean? It was like you do your thing, I go in there and do my thing. We gonna win this game, and we gonna, you know, we gonna go on. But um, like I never looked at it like personal. <clears throat> like I said, we was always trying to win, man. And uh, like even on the bus rides, I still remember you sat right behind me. You know what I mean? And things like that. So. I mean, from going out to eat, so and things like that, conversation like that. So, basketball was just that. You know what I mean? But you, you said you, and like I said, I didn't know, I didn't know who you were before you got to the team, and let alone at that time, I didn't know how much older you. Not that you were much older, but you were way more experienced because you had been to Europe before all this. You had played the NBA. You know what I'm saying? So you, my first year in the NBA was was like your fifth year as a as a pro. Right, so you were way more seasoned and more experienced than I was. Now, at the time, I didn't notice. It's just, all right, I got another a new teammate who come to help the team, and we trying to win. But that was always my, that was always my approach. Now, granted, a lot of guys come into situations that I'm in. They, of course, you're gonna know. Most likely, you're gonna know who I am. Play the Duke, play the NBA, whatever. So, a lot of guys come in like, like maybe looking at me like I'm a target, right? Like, my, mind you, like I said, I don't know, I don't know half the guys overseas my first couple of years because I'm. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I really don't care, and, and I'm green, you know? So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So when guys come to the teams, some of them come in like, oh, I'm coming to bust his ass or take his spot. But I, 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 I never approached it that way with my teammates. Like, yeah, we're going to compete. We're going to get after it. But it's never nothing personal because at the end of the day, we, I'm always trying to win. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So even, like, some younger guys, they, they, I had to, like, look. And kind of, you was older because I didn't have to do that to you. So we kind of just automatically, it just meshed because we, neither, yeah. one, neither one of us was on that. But some younger guys, I've had to like, look, bro, like, you're not taking my job. So let's just get better. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no beef. Let's just get better, bro, and try to win. Like, because at the end of the day, that's what's going to make us money. So there's no need for you to come in here, you know, get mad because you ain't only playing 10, 12 minutes and I'm playing 30. Like, there's no need for that. That's, it is what it is. Like, them people, man, like guys, they never understand. It's always about competition. Like I always, I just like to compete. Like it didn't matter to me who it was, though, cause it was never personal. You know what I mean? Like as far as compete, man, I, I, I think our practices used to be more competitive than I gained some days over there. You know what I mean? In, in Poland, like for real. So it's just a matter of competing. It's just basketball. That's what something we've been doing since we were kids, man. Like you say, growing up in the park, man. So. I mean, we competed against our best friends like that. You know, it was never, 
it was never really personal like that. You know, you play with different teammates, you know what I'm saying? Of course, you have different teammates that went like that. But me, like I said, I've always, that's always been my attitude. Like, and I've always been like that. Like, yo, man, like, ain't that serious, dog. We out here trying to compete and play basketball. You know what I mean? So, um, but uh, like I said, it kind of goes back to what I said uh, earlier when we were talking about my rookie year, you know what I mean? How, you know, you have a young guy who's trying to make his way. You understand what I mean? So he's not really even thinking about the actual winning part of it yet. You know what I mean? He's, right, he right. hasn't even, he hasn't even, he's still trying to find his stability, you know? So um, that'd be a lot of part, like, like parts of it sometimes. So I, I understood, but man, for me, and, I don't I, really I, you're right. And that, that's a lot to do with and, and like you said, a lot of times when a younger guy coming into a situation, especially like that, because the money was different back then. Guys was making some, you know what I'm saying? The money was different back then. So guys coming to that situation, kind of hearing whispers of what the better guys on the team were making and knowing their own situation. You know, like I said, they, they trying to find their way and they trying to, trying to better, you know what I'm saying? Trying to better themselves, put themselves in that type of situation. But it was, yeah, for me also, it was never nothing personal, but I, I had to find myself in like two or three situations throughout my career, like I had to pull the young – and it wasn't always an American guy. Sometimes it was European guys that were young, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, I had kind of had to school them on, look, bro, ain't no reason for us to try to kill each other in practice. We already got to do this twice a day. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We're going to come to an agreement, right? We're going we gonna to come to an agreement. But like, see, I think that sometimes I just used to think, man, that's just them. I mean, and then you know me, I practice hard. I, sometimes I went hard anyway, so that was just right down my alley. All right, y'all want to play like this? I can play. Nah, see, that's how, but yeah. like, but you see, you've seen, you've seen me, you've seen the other side of me too. Like, nah, that's how yeah. stuff happened, bro, especially in Europe, because some of these coaches don't know how to control situations. So that's how, that's how friction happened for no reason, because like Thomas, he was one of them dudes, right? Had, had either one of us been on one, of, like, been, been like that. Like he wouldn't have done nothing. He wouldn't have done that. He would have done the fight. Yeah, exactly. So like that's what, so yeah, I had to nip that in. I learned like all right, because the, these coaches can't control nothing. The referees can't control nothing over there. So you got to take stuff in your own hands and and, and nip it in the bud before it even gets to that point. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Thinking about that, no referees and you remember what's that? What was that Olympiacos when they didn't send the bus? Man, we had to take cabs to the game. Yeah, they didn't send the bus, man. Oh, no. yes, for that. After, after y'all was beat them in the first game, yeah, then we had to oh. come back. It was like 17 minutes on the clock. We get there, it's like, oh, oh it's like, they pull up like 10 cabs. I forgot all about that, bro. Man, I had to take they didn't talk when they forgot to send the bus or something. I was like, was ah, yeah. <laughs> we smoked that game too, yeah, man. You know what, man? I, I always think about that series. That was a Man, they were deep. But they were deep too. That's what I'm saying. But if we win that first game, it changes the whole series. Yeah, 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 yeah. That first game. Yeah. But it was something I don't know. It was just Yeah, they was way too deep. I mean, they was too deep for our, our, our we only had we was only really six or seven strong. They had a they had really ten starting they had two starting fives, really. Then they had big and um <clears throat> I just remember like big Sofo setting them screens. You had Tia Dosis coming up leaning, shooting three pointers. Schooling you know I mean? in, Josh Childress, Clay. He cut they, had a, they had a young Patrick Belly. Patrick Belly didn't get no burn on their team. That's yeah, how, I that's young people, Pat Belly. I tell people, like, yo, he was playing on that team. He didn't even play. They was like, what? I was like, man, that dude was just playing hard. Like, he played hard the little bit he played. But, um, yeah, I just remember them kept on backdooring with that little same play with – little backdoor play with Josh Childress. Little Q, top pick and roll, Josh Shields just starting the corner, cut back door. He was eating. He, Q was killing them though. Oh, you know, Q punished him that series. He, he, was, yeah, he, him that series. he was killing. He was killing Josh. He was killing Josh. And he was killing. He was killing Clay's too. But like that matchup was basically they matchup. Yeah, he was destroying. You know, Q took that person though. You know, Q was ready for that. that. Was on some. But he, I mean, that was his yeah, whole team. Yeah, that <clears throat> Q took that real person. Yeah, that was his former team. Josh Children had you know, made the big splash of, you know, leaving the NBA, come to make that that money he supposedly made over there. And yeah, that was – I don't understand how Q didn't get back. I don't understand how Q didn't make it to one of them teams after that or how he didn't get back to the league at, after how he played that year. That Not even that se- that year. I, I, I never – I don't know. I, I don't even know who his agent is. I mean, I can't even say that. But, man – 
Like that, man, whoever he was, like, yo, he should have been somewhere. Like, I mean, he could have came back to the league. That was, he put together an amazing, they were calling him the Polish LeBron. Yeah, I tell, I, used to tell, I used to tell people that all the time, like, bro, he, and mind you, this was, what's this, 2020? This was a decade yeah. ago, you know what I'm saying? So this was over a decade ago, but we, man, he was, he had all that in Europe, and now, and that's still, people still don't have that type of game in Europe, man. You know, his his game, he can play, he can go over there right now and still still get buckets the way he was big. What six seven, six eight. Strong, it. Big. He can pat it, he can shoot it. And then he was athletic. Then it was nasty. A dog with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and he had a bad attitude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like so he was however you want to get it. Like, yeah, so yeah, nah, man, he could get it in. But it was funny. We was always joking. I was like, I used to tell him he don't play no D. And um, they end up giving that man the, uh, what they give him the defensive player of the year? Like, first thing, you, oh, you don't think you got defense? But on the low, like, he, like his size and his athleticism on the low, like, he did used to get a lot of, like, help side blocks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dang, blocks. yeah, that's what I tell him. I told him, no, I agree. I told him, you get you play the passing lanes and you get steals. You come weak side and you get blocks. You ain't playing no one-on-one nah, defense. One-on-one, nah. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, no. I saw him, he was like, what you mean? We well, was always sitting around and laughing and joking about it. Like, especially when he got it, he was like, so I don't play no D, huh? He was like, what, I got first thing on D? Was like, Whatever. I was like, yo, anybody shoot? We shoot passing lanes, dog. Like, nah, but uh, nah, he would D up when he took You know, he would D up, though. But it was it was funny. No, the one thing, like you said, all them weak side blocks and stuff like that, man. Like him and, him and um, like David Logan, he had a good year that year, too. I've never seen nobody. That man used to go out there and hit some crazy shots. But like that was a mem- that was a memorable year. Yeah, was we, like you said, year. man, it took everybody buying in, and you know what I'm saying, and kind of everybody had to put their egos to the side, and you know what I'm saying, get get their feelings out the way. Because had not, you know, we we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been able to make that run that we did. Uh, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. It was a memorable. It was a memorable season for sure. You remember we played that. Um, it was a third division team. We played them in the cup. We were down. I don't know if you remember that, the third division team. You know the cup we had to go on the road or something like that? And we was down. I don't even know if you remember that game, man. Mm-mm. Because I because most of the time we did I – mean, do you – was you there that year where he was, like, sending, like, the, the B team guys? The second no, team guys? That's what, no, that, no, that wasn't this. This was – no, this wasn't this. This was a game we had to put the Americans in to, to win. No, nah, man, you got to remember this game. It was so <laughs> Because the was over there about to go crazy, man. What, who was out there trying to play real basketball? This team was just out there just playing wild. Like, man, yeah, I can't believe it. Yeah, but that was, yeah, that, I remember that. Third day for the man. man. Um, that guy right there, him and Double D. Him, Double D, and Andre. And the old man. OG, my guy for life. I oh, mean, I wonder how he's doing it. It's in the weight room, there used to be... He was trying to make me do stuff for Gaskins was doing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see, but see, that's what I was talking about earlier. You got to come to understanding with, the, like, people like that. Like, he, I he did it. like Thomas. He wasn't like possession. You gotta, I did it. You got to pull OG to the side and just come to the understanding. Let him know, look, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do, you know what I'm saying? But I can't do what you talking about. Like, yeah. that OG my guy for life. Yeah, he had me shooting on top of the table and everything. Standing on top of a table, we ever had you doing that little gym? They had us spitting gyms, shooting all the Me and Q was in that day, man. You know, Q was tripping. Yeah, Matt, I don't know if you remember oh. that day they was doing the split workouts when they had us going to the yeah, little, gym. In the, in the little gym. Yeah, yeah, man. I tell people the story. You remember that day they made us go in the um, little oxygen tank, the little oxygen thing, and I told y'all I couldn't go in there. I ain't want to get close <laughs> in the room. You remember that? And they had like close, you remember they closed a little thing and put the mask. They made us put the mask on. Oh, I do, I do man. remember that. It was like a little port. It was like a little mobile portable thing. Yeah, it made us go in the building, put the mask on. I'm like, yo, I can't go in here. Hey, me and you, hey, I me and you was the last ones. Yeah, we were together. Yeah, man, I tell you, like, man, I can't do this, man. Yeah, but nah, them were the um, them were the times over there, man. Had them little mark cars and stuff like that. Still got all those pictures, man. Driving around them little. Had to, couldn't even go to what's that soap pot? Yeah, you couldn't even go to soap pot. Every time with a soap pot, they pull us over because we have no license. Like the little, 
The I didn't have no license. I got put on game early. I had an international jobs license, so I I never got messed with it. Man, we can't that one that but I, man, I will say we you know we can go on to the next subject, but it's man, I'm glad we got out of there. You know that I'm just glad that that, that <laughs> man. It was them last that last I just remember the, the the good the good times over there, man. Man, look, I had one more year that mess, bro. And I, I me and dude, me and dude, I'm, I'm gonna square it up with dude my third year. I, I couldn't play for him no more. We, I'm, nah, man, I don't even. Yeah, if he said now, I, you know what? I actually, um, I actually don't have no problems with him. But he was just, man, he was just different. Th- he's not a bad coach. He's actually a good coach. He just don't know how to control himself. Like he actually, he actually know what he's talking about. Like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. principles and all that. Like you know what I'm saying? Like he actually a pretty good. He just he was too ambitious and he didn't have no respect for nobody. You know what I'm saying? Nobody. But he didn't have no respect for authority. Like, you know what I'm saying? He thought he could just do what he wanted to do. Like nah, that ain't how this works, bro. Like you ain't finna yeah, talk to me any type of way and think I'm about to accept it like I'm one of these Polish kids or something. Like no, that's not. It's not how this gonna go. Yeah, no, nah, what was that? Then he pushed, he, he, pushed, he pushed Double D and smack. He used to smack the papers out of the head he, all the time. He pushed Double D and pushed them that, bro. It was in the Toro, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. He yeah. used to smack and that. And what, Double D trying to help him. Like, it actually, Double D, what Double D was trying to tell him was actually what he needed to hear. It was something about a timeout or something. But, yo, he used to smack Double D hands. He used to, every time Andre used to come to him and try to give him the paper, he used to smack the paper out of his head. Like, so somebody in foul trouble, like, he, man, now he was, that's why I couldn't do it with him no more. Like, for I mean, I, I love that year, but that was, I mean, if it wasn't because of y'all, that would have been a tough year. Like, you know what I mean? Like, as far as, that's, oh, I mean, that's what helped us get through it, honestly, each other. Oh, you know? for sure. For sure. Yeah. For he used sure. to sit over there and get massages at half court. Just sitting over there. I just yeah. like, look at that dude. Bro, dog. how about when we, how about the days he didn't show up to practice after off day? Yeah. Uh, up there, they have us out there jogging around the field in the snow. I used to say, I used to like, man, for 10 minutes. So I got to wake up at 9. What are you doing? Like, what are, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, I used to be so mad, man. But, yeah, man, goes, so, yeah, we could talk about these crazy stories for forever, bro, in Europe. And people, like yeah. I said, people, they don't understand how – they think it's all glitz and glam to be in Europe and getting – like, you really don't get to see – it's not like we tourists. Right, we in one country, yeah. we in one city, and that's that's where we living and working for you know for nine to ten months out the year. Uh, but so we we do that. You, we join forces in, in 09, 2010, make a long, make a big run, make make it to the final eight in the Euro League. We win the Polish Polish Cup again for the second year in a row. A lot of guys have really good seasons uh, after that. So after that, you play. How many more years after that you play? You play in Europe. Like- Three more years, I think. Three more years. I finished up like um, I think I played like two more years in Poland. Finished up my last year in South America, and then uh, actually was crazy that my I actually was gonna be done in Poland in my last year in South America. One of these coaches from my, um, like from Memphis, like when I worked out in Memphis and all of that, I actually developed a good relationship with him. He used to train me and stuff when I stayed in Atlanta. Uh, like after you know my first two years out, I was saying Atlanta doing something used to work me out. And it was his first like one of his first gigs was over in South America in Colombia, man. And he was like wanted me to come over there and be the point guard for this team. So you know I finished up over there my last you know my last year. But uh, like I said, man, that was I'm glad I played. But sometimes I like I wish I wouldn't have did it. You know what I mean? Like it was just like I I did it for him, but I had fun. I enjoyed it, you know. Because I'm not necessarily not to say that um, I wish I wouldn't have did it. Um, I just didn't get to prepare myself, like, you know what I mean? Like, I really would have, because I didn't really do anything from once I had stopped that time in Poland. You know what I'm saying? So to try to get back in shape, to go over there and do it, and, like, man. But I knew, one thing I did do, I, I knew after that, yeah, well, that was it. I was like, right, yeah. So you, you enjoyed your time in South Because I, I, I had a bad experience in South America, S- similar to how you did it, and it was, it was all bad. No, you know what? It was cool, and it was it was cool because um, I mean, I've always been in one of them, man. I ain't trying to. I know I was never bringing America here. So whatever it is over here, like the food or whatever it is, I'm a, I'm gonna deal with it as long as my safety, as long as I'm safe. You understand what I mean? As long as it's within reason, and um, as long as I'm living cool. So long, that was cool. I mean, but 
But other than that, man, I always looked at it like <clears throat> it's just that's the way these people live. Tomorrow, I'm used to it. Yeah, so that, I mean, but I, I, ne- I mean, I didn't have too many problems. I mean, it's just Europe. You know, you, you start to hear about Europe so much and you just hope and pray you don't go to one of those things and have to be in that situation. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to those things. So I used to try to do a lot of research before I went there just with my agent and holler my homies, but I'm, I'm, I was pretty lucky on that end of it for the sake of my career. Well, you know, my experiences was never bad with the actual cities or the, you know, the culture or the people that of the places I've been to. Uh, like I said, my, my city, so I, was, I was just, I was in Buenos Aires. So I was in the capital of, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, it was, it was love. Like city was love. The team was cool. It just like I said, one of them situations where the, the management was some BS and they wasted my time for a month and they still owe me some bread. So I'm hot about it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, now that them parts of the games, now that yeah, they send they send you home without it, you know, and wait on and stuff like that. But I mean, that was the last year. That's what I say. I mean, that was the last year. So I mean, it, it was just like that. That was. I mean, what can you say? You hate for the end like that, though. Yeah, you know? like you said. Yeah, that was. <laughs> that was uh... Yeah, that was 2018, and then I, I played again in 2019 to finish up. But yeah, that was almost like that was kind of like the last. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nah, this can't hide. This can't be hot in. Like, yeah, nah, you, you ain't finna. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't finna do me dirty like that, and you ain't give me my bread. Nah, this can't be hot. Yeah, but, but then, right, you know, so, so you get a total of how many years? For 12, 12, 12, 13 years, man. Okay, you know what? To tell you the truth, man. I don't even. I just started and I ended. Man, <laughs> I just started. I know I started in 2002. Yeah, man, I think I played like 12, 13 years. I mean, 12, 13 years, man, for real, for real. Let's, let's see. Like three? Let me see. You finished let's in 2014, see. so 12 years. Yeah, 12 years, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah. man, um, man, that's what I said, man. Once that ball, I just rolled it so the wheels fall off. That was it. Like, I'm, I'm going to do this for as long as I can. Well, man, from a personal standpoint, I, I have to say congratulations, man. Uh. I, like, I learned a lot today, just, you know, have, looking you up and going through your actual, you know, your actual profile on Wikipedia, how you started and what you've been through, man. It's, to have made the NBA three separate different times, bro, like, that's that's mm-hmm. a hell of an accomplishment, mm-hmm. and it's tough. Like, you did, you made three different teams, you know what I'm saying, on three different occasions, man, and, and that's in between years where you was out the league, right? I don't think – people people don't really understand how hard it is to make it to the NBA, right, especially – the way you did it, undrafted, having to prove yourself every time you made the team. So, man, I, I commend you on a hell of a career, bro. Like, straight up. Man, I appreciate it, man. I tell people, it was like, I, um, like, I'm like, I, I could never imagine, you know, doing them, you know what I mean, doing those things. And just from, like, coming from that, you know what I mean, coming from Wagram, coming from a small town, having, not being able to, you know, to get recruited and, do those things, man. I think it all prepared me for that. You oh, know what I'm saying? Sure. So when I finally, you know, when I finally got that opportunity, man, I was just able to keep going. It was like whatever opportunity I had, I looked at it like a blessing. You know what I mean? Like I said, like I told you before, I stopped playing AAU at the end of my junior high school. So from this point on, what can you get mad about? Really? You know what I'm saying? Like you had yeah. gave up. Not to say I had gave up, but you just had, like I said, you had a different perspective. Like you was, you was ahead of your time. Yeah. Into, like you had a different perspective about just pursuing life. You had a different perspective. Yeah. So that was, you know, what I mean, that was more or less my mindset with it, man. But yeah, I definitely, I definitely appreciate that, and I, I just try to use my story even with these kids now. You know what I mean? When I go out there and, and uh, work, man, like don't worry about it. Just keep working. And that's all I said. I like, don't just keep working. Like don't worry about it. Just keep working. Keep working. Great segue that you said, you know, use your story with these kids now. So you, you finished up in 2014, it's 2020. How was your, talk a little bit about how your, transi- how your transition was retiring from basketball and figuring out what you were going to do next. Man, you know what actually happened, um, like right after I got done with basketball, one of my, um, <clears throat> one of my homies, Samar, Samar Slay, he's actually in the NBA PA. Players Association, he do that. He got a, he had an organization. He had an organization here now, uh, Small Slate Basketball. So he asked me to, um, <clears throat> like, coach one of his teams for him. You know what I mean? I started coaching one of his teams for him. He was kind of in another city, which is Waxhaw. It's kind of like a, like 45 minutes or an hour from my house. You know what I mean? But 
I could um, still like within Charlotte, you know what I mean? But it's kind of like um, driving across town. And uh, I did that for him, like, you know, the year or whatever. And uh, just a lot of kids and stuff like that started, you know, wanting me to start and coaching and things like that. And um, he kind of took some time off with it. And I just, you know, started my thing here in Charlotte. Me and one of my, uh, one of my other guys here in Charlotte, man, we started our own thing here training and, you know, have our own teams and stuff like that. But, you know, don't really, really try to get out there and be as huge uh, as some of these other teams. You know what I mean? Like, y'all have a good thing down there going your partner, TJ. You know, we're not – you know, to that level, as, um, you know, as far as getting a whole lot of teams and taking them on the road, you know, I'm not really with that right now. But uh, you know, we have some good kids, like in our group, you know, that we train and work with, man. They so, good kids on the court and off the court, too. So that's, you know, that's... that's that, that's really, that helps. Nah, uh, man, that's that's number one. You're wasting your time. You can't yeah. keep wasting your time. It's not. So what's the name of, what's the name of the program that you that you started? Um, it's Guard U Basketball. Me and my partner, his name is uh, Tyrone Mc, uh, McDaniel. And, um, yeah, he went to, he actually went to the North Ryan. You know what I mean? What's crazy is I always have to hear it from him. He's number one in our conference in steals, and I'm number two, though. And he, like, he older than me, but I told him if I would have knew he was him then, I would have broke his record. Like, if I would have knew that if I would have bumped into you, I definitely would have got that. I would have had to go for it. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, no, we do our thing together here, man. So, uh no, it's it's cool, man. Charlotte got a like I'm I'm be honest with you, Charlotte has Charlotte has a real like a lot of good players. So so your transition basically, I'm not gonna say it was smooth, but you kind of fell right into continuing with the basketball background, uh coaching, <clears throat> branched off to doing training. Now you have your own program. Uh just talk a little bit about you saying you're in Charlotte. So you, you, you reside in Charlotte now. Talk some about the landscape of North Carolina basketball at, at the grassroots level. So yeah, so all right, so you you transitioned from re, you retired in 2014. You transitioned into staying in the basketball realm of things, coaching, and, and now you're training, and now you have your own program. Guard you basketball. You're out in Charlotte. Talk a little bit about uh, the landscape of the grassroots basketball in the in the North Carolina state. Man, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I'm not being biased. I think North Carolina got the best basketball in the United States right now. Like, I mean. Maybe I might, might be sound a little biased because I'm getting to see this, but I keep my eye on, you know what I mean? But, um, but they always call us the hoop state, you know what I mean? And, like, I, I think right now, man, there's some, it's a lot of kids around here with a lot of, a lot of talent. Um, when you talk about even the Raleigh area, you know, Durham area, here in Charlotte, you know what I mean? Jeff McKinnis, I'm sure you know, you know Jeff. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he has a really good program up there at, um, at a Combine Academy. You know, they have some really good players. Um, and some of these up and coming, you know, players hitting that ninth grade, tenth grade. But you know, like I said, it's a long road for a lot of them. But man, they're like they have some really good, really, really, really good kids. Yeah, one of them actually declared for the draft. I think he one of them Arabian prep kids here in North Carolina. But I'm not sure if it's just one of those things declared and come back. But I mean, it's a lot of good, a lot of good players here. You know, they have a lot of those, um, a lot of events here where they be bringing in a lot of those other teams, you know, from other cities and stuff like that. So you'll get a chance to see those kids compete against, you know, some of them top players from from some of these other cities. So, uh, you know, some lot of, lot of good tough players around here. Let's get, um, you know, I think right so, now. So we'll, we'll wrap up with this. So you, you're in the AAU circle heavy. Uh, like I said, you have your program. You, you do training with kids. What do you think about what's going on now with the grassroots and the NBA allowing the G League to offer these high school kids these these contracts? What do you think that's going to? You think that's a, you think it's good? You think it's bad? You, what, what? I would say this like I just remember when I walked into the I'm gonna leave that to say I just remember when I walked into the in the in the NBA like the first time and I thought of, and how people. Like, people knew me, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Junior, you know, they call your name, and you're no way like a star like Kobe. And the first thing I was thinking was, like, why does Michael Jordan, why is he the only one that has his shoe brand? You understand what I'm saying? 
like with when you think about how much star power um, these other athletes have, like why is he the only one that really has it? Like why isn't there a LeBron James at that time? Like he could have came out of out of school and he could have started his own brand. Like, you know what I mean? As far as this thing, I mean, he just had to set the platform, you know what I mean, together for him to do that. And that's kind of why I love what Lonzo Ball dad did. I think maybe he went about it the wrong way, right? you know what I mean? Charts are too high for his shoes. I think if he came out with a $99 price point, you know what I mean, been a little bit more, you know what I mean, normal and hum uh, humble about it, he would have got a lot of people, you know what I mean, to back him at that time. I mean, I say all that to say, like, athletes have – Star power from a young age, you know what I mean. And sometimes people will get it; they take advantage of it. So I think it's a situation now where they're starting to take advantage of those things. You know what I'm saying? Where they're starting to, um, I mean, the times are changing to where you just, they're just not believing and believing anything anymore, going for anything anymore, and they're starting to protest a lot more and stand up a lot more for this. So. I think you're gonna see a lot more kids doing it. Actually, you know, if the kids are ready, I'm big on like I'm also as much as I'm glad that they get an opportunity to do that. I think um, I hope that they they should be make sure they're ready to go there and play. Um, I think uh, I always tell people to start with y'all, man. When Corey McGetty and Elton Brand left left early, man, it was like once once they did it, man, it was over for basketball. <laughs> was, that was the first. Corey, what Corey did, what Corey, what McGetty did at the time was unprecedented. He left after a freshman year, but EB left after yeah. freshman year, which was which was still early at the time. But Corey leaving after freshman year, like that, guys weren't leaving after their freshman year. Yeah, what, when he like, did wasn't that. man. And also, like um, people don't understand, like my my first year, like I tell Maryland won the championship that year. It was Lonnie Baxter, Steve Blake, Juan Jackson, and Chris Wilcox. Yep. Right, whole squad, yeah. Uh, who, yeah. Went, who went? Who got? Who? Who was a star on that team? Juan Dixon and Lonnie Baxter, right? Yeah. Who got drafted first? Chris Wilcox, the youngest player on the team who came across, who came off the bench and was a freshman. Like you understand what I mean? And so it was like the things that started to change with that, you know. But um, some of these guys, I think, they come out in there too early, and they may not be. You know, it's ready, but I just want to make sure these kids are ready. But I love it. They can play, and they got an opportunity to go do it and take care of their family. You can go to war at 18. We like to be able to take care of your family at 18. You know, yeah, if I'm, with you. I'm with you, man. I think it's a, I think it's a good idea, and I think that the approach is good. That the NBA is like, okay, we're not just gonna say you guys, because I mean the rule haven't changed, still hasn't changed back to guys being able to come straight out of high school and go to the league. So for right now, I think this is the best option for right now. Uh, it gives the guys a chance to say, all right, I don't, I don't want to go to college, really. And I'm really not trying to go overseas to be, you know, be away from my family. I'm, I'm only 18. Like, you know, that's tough in itself. Like, I never was really with that. I'm not saying guys shouldn't go pursue, you know, pursue being a professional yeah. and make that bread. By all means, go get the bag. But at the same time, an 18-year-old going to live in a foreign country, like, that's, that's tough, man. I know, I know, but some of these kids around here, I look at it like, man, if they would have actually, if they might be living over there, they probably would be playing these teams anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's say if you take some of, like, hypothetic, if they just would have just been living over there in that country. Like, some of these kids are good enough today. You know how they do over there in Europe, them and their farm system, and, and um, they yeah. would build them up this way. So I think the, the NBA do need something like that for their, for their, I think now they have, like, the little system set up where they do have the life skills classes for them, and, you know what I mean? As long as they do giving them that other stuff to prepare them for, you know what I mean? For basketball, I think it's cool. You know what I mean? I think, um, I think, uh, I mean, definitely let them give them college courses. You know what I mean? As long as they yeah, I, find a way to teach them, teach them what they need. You know, I, I think teach them what they need that'll, that'll be helpful for them. I know? think that's, that's part of the whole deal. Uh, this, this, this deal that's going on with these kids taking advantage of it now, the, the Jalen Greens and some of the other, uh, Isaiah Todd and, I think it was one other kid I know for sure that decided that they was going to take the deal. That's all that stuff that you just mentioned, the life courses and all that financial, like financial literacy stuff, taking college courses, all that's involved, all that's included as part of the, as part of the deal, which is great. Like I said, these guys are still very young, you know, their futures are bright, but nothing's, you know, nothing's guaranteed. So you have to teach these guys really how to be professionals, how to manage money, how, you know, the business of, of the game, like they're gonna need all these things, especially skipping school, which you're not gonna learn that in school anyway. So, I mean, yeah. you're, not, you're not missing them, but 
Uh, I, I think it's a great idea, man. Like, I think the NBA is trying to use the G League as kind of like a, a, farm, a farm system. Uh, and they're doing a better job with it now. The pay is the pay has went way up since we since we was in the league, and it was called the development league. Uh, the structure is better. Guys are actually getting opportunities out of the G League way more often now than you know when it first first was developed. So I think it's a good idea, man. Uh, and the fact that it's control, so not any kid, which they might have an issue with, but not any kid can just go get this opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they gotta want you. They got they got to choose you. They got to offer you the opportunity, which I think is good because you don't want too many kids thinking that hey, oh, I can just I can just go do that. But with that being said, we're gonna we're gonna leave with this. With that being said, the kid Amani Bates. I was thinking about him. <laughs> Bates. He's 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 probably he's probably gonna be a generational type player. Very good sophomore. They gave this kid Gatorade Player of the Year. What what else does he have? Like, what does he go from here? Uh, what what does he go from here? Mm-hmm. You're 16 years old. You already cause you you better than two classes you ahead. Win it again. You win it again. You win it again. You 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 like you give him no reason to like. That's what I like when I like I told this this kid's name Makai. You know he's a really good player, and I told him like man, like you always have something to prove. Like you want to be the number one player in the nation. I'm like, okay, now you get to be number one. Now everybody gunning for you. So now every time you step on the court, you gotta you gotta be on your game, you know. And I was like, so you you get rookie of the year. All right, now you got that. Now you want to get this. Now you know he got Gatorade Player of the Year. So hopefully at home, he at home, he's trying to get it again. Hopefully he got a goal to become three time Gatorade Player of the Year, um, three times state, national, whatever he can achieve. He can't just like I sum it up like put it like this right here. Nick Saban. I mean, I love Alabama, not because I like Alabama, because I just like, you know what I mean? I like Belichick because of like the tradition. I like Saban because of that attitude. Like Belichick, Saban, Popovich, those type of coaches. You know, I love their attitude and their program. But they asked him about the championship one time. They was like, Man, you know, you won all these championships, you've done this, you've done that, you made this, you know, what do you guys want to do? And he was like, I'm going to, we're going to celebrate this, uh, you know, we're going to celebrate this championship tonight and tomorrow we're going to get back on the road and we're going to start recruiting. We're going to try to go do it again next year. And so, uh, man, that's how I hope he approaches it. Because like I said, man, he, that's only, he's only, um, that's not his ultimate goal. You know what I mean? That's why I always ask him. I would ask him, like, what's your ultimate goal, young man? Like, this is your ultimate goal. I'm glad you said that because you brought up a good point about today's age kids understanding who they are and what they're worth. He's 16, right? You gave him player of the year already as a sophomore. First time it's ever been done. If he, if, if I'm him, if I'm him, what else I got to prove in high school? Nothing. You already saying I'm the best. You know what I'm saying? You saying I'm the best now and basically. Can, but look. No, somebody can come catch you. Right. But he's still going to, if he don't get hurt, he's still going to be, He's still gonna be at the top, right? Yeah, but somebody out there gunning for him right now. Right, but whether he get if he doesn't get hurt, he's still gonna be one or two, right? Yeah, he's number one pick right now. Yeah, don't get hurt. Exactly. So look, what you just said, he's number one pick right now. He don't. <laughs> all right. Now what's going on with the the G League? I'm 16. You already said I'm, I'm the best player in high school. I have nothing to prove. I need one of them deals now. Yeah, that sounds good, but I mean, you got to have if somebody who might catch him. I don't know. We're great. He's gonna be a junior next year. I need one of them deals now. I ain't got nothing else to prove in high school, bro. I need yeah. one of them deals they now. Do. Look, give me two years of grooming. No, they don't. Give me two years of grooming, making uh, making some bread. Uh, let me ask you: if you were if you were a senior in high school right now, if you got to be a senior. Now you got to have a player of money based on your schedule. Like, you want to go with his head. You don't feel like he's that good enough to – now, he's a good – no, I'm talking – I think he's – now, I agree with you. He maybe should go there. But I'm speaking from a mindset of mentality. I would have to go at him. I just can't – he's not – like if I'm a senior in high school or if I'm in his class and I feel like I'm just as good as him, I don't care what that man who – that Gatorade man said. Like, I need to see him. So don't send him away right now. Like, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I, I agree. I, I don't feel like he should – If I was his people and I was him – I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> like we, that's what we I'm saying. Like, 
yeah. from a standpoint that the athletes have a lot of leverage nowadays. If I'm his people, if if, if he, I'm I'm testing that. Like, look, I need one of them deals. Can I get one of them offers? At least yeah, like, I think I think he would have a better chance going to Europe than he would have doing that because I don't think you already know how the NBA. They ain't want to open. That's Pandora's box. Like once you open that, now you got everybody trying to do it. I mean, now you got now you got to be in the money Bates. Now you have to be in the. That's special what I'm saying, player. everybody, yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. in the money Bates. Like you know what I'm saying. Like I said, this this kid generational right now. Like everybody ain't the money Bates. So, but yeah, yeah but if, I'm, if I'm a class of 2020 senior, I'm a McDonald's All American. I'm one of the top kids. Like I'm pissed because there's some yeah, kids, yeah, there's some kids in 2020 that that I, that I think will handle. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't think he he's very good. I don't think he's not physically he, enough yet. Yeah, I don't think he's, he's ready for a really talented 2020 guy. Like to say to give him the, Mac, the Gatorade Player of the Year. Like, yeah, they they put a huge target on his back. Not that he already didn't have one. But they put a huge target on the kid and huge expectations. Which, I mean, I think he has the talent to live up to, but it makes it tougher. I like you know when I look at him and see him. I like how he he embraces every challenge. I think that says a lot. Like when a player know that they hunt it, you know what I mean, and then they still willing to embrace every challenge. You know what I mean? If they face, it don't seem like he take no games off. It's like every time he out there on the court, he's like he's trying to fry somebody, you know? Like he's really trying to go at them. So, I mean, even on the circuit, when you look at him out there, you know what I mean? He may know he the man, but he go out there and play like it too. Like yeah, he, I, he remind me. I haven't seen them up close, but just from what I've seen on highlights and I, and watching them on, on you know, like on when they streaming some of them games in the summertime, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you this, and then we gonna go. We gonna let you go. I think he. He right now. He's a mixture of KD skill wise. Yeah. And KG intensity. That's what I was saying. That's intensity. Now you know what I'm talking about. That's what I mean by he be going that PBA that part of it. And that's he looks. He, everything he do is KD. That long crossover setting you up and then with the pool. But yeah, now that's what we remind me of. Uh, our young KD and um. In Texas. I ain't see KD in high school, but I used to love to watch him in Texas. But no, I think he's gonna be a special player. Cause right now, like I said, he's that he's that that next thing right now. Six ten, like he's shooting over you. You know what I mean? He's and, doing, um, kid nasty, bro. Like he doing yeah. he, the kid is nasty. He doing he doing everything, like I said, in high school as a sophomore. I, I wish like him the best, but I like to see him work on his low post game right now. So I have Good luck with that, but yeah, good luck with that. Huh? Good luck with that. No, I didn't need to, yeah, but I'm just saying shooting over them. Because you have to get it anyway. Eventually, they're going to make you do it. And Not really. Not really. They, they even make KD get on that catch. He got to learn how to expire. He like, ain't catching on the box, though. But still, it's – it, 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 All right, that ain't – that ain't. And what he doing? He catching it. He ain't backing you down. He catching it and dirking you. Like – Well, they got to learn it. He got to learn it. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he, he got that already? He'll get that. That's easy. We need to go his ahead and work. That's, with his height, that's easy. Like – and it, it might not be Dirkish or Dirk like, but with his if height, we, he'll get something like wanna, that. If we want him to go test the, the 16 waters, we need him doing that right now. We need to send the people film with him doing Dirk type stuff. We got to see like he's, he's, but no, I think he's going to be a real, real spy. I'd like to see him in two, three years. I really do. You going to see him soon. <laughs> 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 uh, by the time, what, he, he was supposed to be, what, 2022? 20, yeah, he, no, he, I, they, I think they changed the rule for him. That, that's, that's, why I said, NBA, that's why I just said you're gonna see him soon. Man, the NBA is very smart. Like they're very they they looked at it like, uh, you know, God rest his soul, Kobe is retiring, LeBron's getting old. Who do they like Giannis? We really don't have this the star power is leaving our league. The money banks right now, you know what I mean? I I wouldn't say that, bro. It's some it's some killers. It's still some you talking about mega stars. Um who can who can who will walk through the mall and and, and stop it? Like Steph Curry, yeah. Steph, Steph yeah. and LeBron are older now. There's nobody else now. I mean, you're right, but I still think like guys like it's. I mean, guys like Giannis. Giannis is scary. Yeah, but ain't the star power. And he's not a superstar yet. But Giannis is. He he he. Giannis is scary. Uh, we don't really know what AD can do uh, because he's on the team with LeBron now. But and the fact that he's in the LA, like AD could be AD, AD could be up next as far as star power. Kawhi could. But Kawhi, Kawhi don't have a he don't have the personality. Yeah. You know, as far as his accomplishment in his game, he's yeah. he could be there, but he don't have the personality. Uh, I think they're looking for. I mean, I think they're looking for that next player. 
because it was like, you know, you had Mike, then you had Kobe to carry the torch, then you coming in with LeBron. LeBron carried the torch for 10 years. I think they need to – I don't know – I think he's that next player that's going to have to carry the torch for 10 years. Oh, oh well, we got – I mean, we got some guys. We got some – Trey Young, and I'm not saying they lebron or Kobe, but as far as being exciting and young superstars on the rise, Trey Young, Luka Doncic, Zion, John ja Morant, like, it's it's people coming up. Yeah, I would, I would like to see him, but it's just – it ain't that you still ain't named no – I'm, I mean, I, I'm not being fair right now. I just named Mike Kobe. Yeah, you named. Uh, I, I tell you, my bad, young fellas. If they see this, say y'all are really good players. That's no not to know y'all. Like, yeah, you. You understand know what I mean, though? Like one of them maybe can take it up, but like those of them, man, they, that's just a that's an odd to them too, though. Like those are some really good players. Like, but uh, I think he can do it, though. Like I said, I like Trey Young. All those guards. I'm glad I don't have to play no defense on these guys the way they dribbling the ball. Like, Trey get a lot of fouls. A lot, of, a lot of more following. You, they'll be like you. They'll be asking me about my following. You know what it'll be. <laughs> you know what it'll be. <laughs> but, man, uh, bro, I appreciate it, man. We had, had a great time, man. Like I said, I, I learned a lot about you today, a lot more about you, man. I appreciate you checking in and, and talking with me, man, sitting down having a conversation with me. Uh, I think a lot of people uh, will, enjoy, will enjoy our conversation, man. Man, I appreciate you doing it, man. This is taking me down memory lane. Like, honestly, this is the first time I ever um, it's really reflected over my whole career, man. Like, for real, for real. So, like, people always ask me about, you know what I mean, how there's bits and pieces at one time, but just like, actually go back and do this, man. I really, really appreciate the opportunity to do this, man. Like, and I definitely, uh, you know, you keep doing what you're doing, man. Much, much success when all this stuff right here get over, man. You get back out there on TV and do your thing, man. Stay sharp, uh, stay sharp in, them, in your suits, man. That man was sharp on TV. <laughs> hey, hey, you know that's the one thing. I'm, I'm a, if I don't sound good, I'm at least look good, bro. Man, you know, man. I said that's my guy right there. Yeah, man, he's that. But uh, no, nah, man, I, I appreciate it. Like I said, man, that was that was very good, man. I think I'll, I, you, that's a good thing you're doing here, man, for basketball players. It's therapeutic too. You know what I mean? To sit there and talk about your career and things like that, get it out, man. And, Hopefully, it inspire somebody or some kid out there, and something like that, man. A lot of guys that's gonna be, and I could say it's gonna be more guys in my situation than it will be in yours. You know what I mean? Exactly, man. And, that, and that's what it's about, man. Just hopefully that if it, if it, even if it just touch one person, like if it inspire, influence one person, man, to really <clears throat> take something from it. I mean, that's what it's about, man. The hearing other people's stories, because nobody would ever really know your story or understand it unless you tell it. You know what I'm saying? Like they can look at it, look it up, but not really telling it and understanding it, like, it puts it in a different perspective. So, man, like I said, I appreciate you taking the time and sharing sharing with me, man. And God bless you and your people, bro. You stay safe. Hey, man, you too, man. Stay up, man. Be blessed. You too, man. You got it.